Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. So, I have like about half an hour where I could just chat with you guys. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna take advantage of having this time to talk. Um, and let's talk about High Priestess energy. Let's talk about meditation, okay? So meditation, um, I brought out my Radiant Rider weight because I wanna focus on High Priestess. So let's find her so we can have a visual. I wanted to talk to you guys today about how, like my little tips for meditating and connecting with your higher self in meditation, okay? So when I started my tarot journey, the high priestess was actually the card that I was um, constantly thinking about. It was the person, the character, the archetype in the tarot that I wanted to be most like, okay? So High Priestess to me was the epitome of what I wanted to be as a reader. Now, you may be different. <coughs> when you start your journey, you might find that maybe you wanna be more like the Empress, okay? Maybe her archetype speaks to you. Maybe you wanna inhibit more of moon energy, you know? Maybe you work solely with, that, with the moon vibe or, um, or the sun, the masculine. Um, there's a there's a lot of different archetypes within the tarot, but for me, when I was first starting my journey, High Priestess was the one that really called to me. Um, and what I did was, when I was learning the cards, I used to literally sleep with High Priestess under my pillow. I don't know where it was that I read about. Um, sleeping with your cards underneath your bed or under your pillow to kind of um, use it as a way to kind of embrace those energies of your cards to work on connecting with your cards. Um, I read that somewhere when I was like looking up just, you know, reasons to connect with the cards and whatnot. And I remember I was like, you know what, because I want to be more like High Priestess, I'm going to sleep with High Priestess under my pillow. I kid you not, I had a couple dreams. Um, I'm a very heavy dreamer anyway. I'm a Pisces, so dreams are very um, strong with me. I am a very lucid dreamer. I am. Um, I remember my dreams. I dream in color. I dream in black and white, whatever. So to dream about the high priestess wasn't surprising because she was on my mind a lot when I would go to sleep. Um, but the other thing that I did was I would meditate. And I really started my meditation before um, I learned the tarot um, because at that time when I was learning tarot when it first was introduced to me in my life um, I was attending therapy once a week so because I was starting my whole <clears throat> my whole journey of I think of my med my my therapy journey as um, self-healing it was me becoming more familiar with who I am um, and I was, because I was doing it once a week, my therapist really taught me how to become more, well, I, she taught me the importance of me embracing more of who I really am because all of my life I grew up being someone else for someone else or being a version of myself that I thought I had to be for someone else. So therapy brought out who I really am and it really brought out the archetype of myself of the high priestess because shortly after I started my therapy sessions was when tarot came into my life. So, um, she told me, my therapist told me about the importance of meditation. I never was one to meditate. Um, I was raised in a very conservative household, which are born again Christians. And they look at meditation as, um, unnecessary. They are more about the power of prayer. Um, so I was never really one to meditate. Well, my therapist was more spiritual and um, she shared with me the importance of it and how it would bring down my anxiety. Um, so I remember I put on some headphones one night. I searched on YouTube meditation or guided meditation. Um, I remember there was so many to choose from and because I've never meditated before, I just kind of scrolled through the one that was like maybe five or ten minutes long. And I remember I lay down <laughs> and I listened to the meditation. It was like 10 minutes and I cried. I remember I was like laying there meditating or I think I was meditating, um, but I was very emotional and it was a 
just an amazing experience. Um, so from that point on, I remember I like tried to make it a, maybe like a weekly ritual where once a week I was meditating, but I was so into it and I was so relaxed and I noticed how it made me feel so, um, calm and less stressed that I started to meditate daily. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry guys. I'm still sick. Um, so I started to meditate on a daily basis at night. I was always meditating before I go to bed and that's still something that I do. I totally like scratched myself. <laughs> um, so my tips, first thing, get headphones, you guys, headphones, earbuds, something that you could plug in your ear and listen because it really enhances the experience. Okay. My second tip is to, if you don't have, um, if you don't have like Spotify or whatever, um, you can totally look up guided meditations on YouTube. That's what I do. I still do it. So search guided meditation. You can search um, meditation music if you prefer just to listen to, to music and not really have a guided thing in your head. Um, or there's like, excuse me, there's chakra meditations. Um, and you can also look like guided meditation for anxiety, guided meditation for sleep, whatever. Um, but really I was just searching guided meditation and I would just kind of scroll through to see which one caught my attention. Um, so do that. Okay. The next tip is to turn off your lights. Okay. So we all know like when we have our lights, our rooms are illuminated. Um, we have the fluorescent lighting or whatever, turn it off. If you have a salt lamp, turn the salt lamps on. I have about four or five of them. <laughs> I'm really obsessed with my salt lamps. Um, so I'll turn on a couple of them or all of them because really the dimness of the, of the salt lamp isn't as bright. So you could have multiple ones in your room. So I turned on the salt lamps and you turn off the lights and I think my husband's home. Let me make sure it's him. I don't want to be all talking about meditation and then like my family comes home. <laughs> As you guys can see, I can't really be like 100% me in the household I live in. So I just have to be kind of careful. I'm pretty sure it's him. Anyways, um, so when you're meditating, or um, what was I saying? What was I even saying? <sighs> we were talking about the lights, the salt lamps. So um, I will turn on a couple salt lamps, but I'll turn off, always turn off the light. Either a dark room or you can have like a very subtly illuminated room with just some salt lamps or like a, a night light or something and get some crystals. So I pulled some crystals that I love to use during my meditations. This is an ammonite. It's like a fossil, okay? These are really good for past life, okay? Past life meditations. If you're getting into like the whole, I wanna see who I was, what I was, the energies of who I was in a past life. Ammonite is really good for that because it's a fossil. Um, so I associate fossils obviously with, they carry a lot of the energies of the, the creature that it once was. Labradorite. Labradorite is a really, really, really good stone to have if you're meditating. Um, Labradorite is that beautiful stone where you get that flash, as you can see here and here. So you get that beautiful flash. Um, Labradorite to me is a stone of the third eye, which is when you're meditating, you are really focusing on this section of your body here third eye it is the psychic connection another third another um crystal i like recommend for meditation is um amethyst amethyst is not only very relaxing and soothing it's healing and it's also connected it's purple um it's connected to your third eye so i totally recommend amethyst um i didn't bring it with me but i also sometimes will use clear quartz Clear quartz is really good for enhancing the energies that you were working with or enhancing like what is around you. Um, so clear quartz is another good one. But I would say my favorite to meditate with is Labradorite. I really feel like Labradorite just kind of embodies everything about spirituality, everything about your psychic abilities, your psychic senses, your third eye. Um, so I totally recommend um, Labradorite for that. 
And like I said, I do recommend Ammonite if you want to work as work as <laughs> work as if you want to focus on um, past life energies or like your past or your ancestry work, that kind of thing. Um, child childhood um, traumas. I feel like Ammonite would be a good one. So I try, I really felt like called to pull it because I've actually been working with this one a lot. Um, so there you go. So get a crystal. Now let's say you just, all you have is a rose quartz. Use the rose quartz. If you have a stone that you found, like I have some rocks that I've, I've collected when I was little and I still have them. Those are special, you know? So if you have a stone, maybe it's not necessarily a crystal or it's not necessarily one of the ones I told you guys about. It's okay. Use whatever you feel is right for you. Um, and hold it with you. So sometimes if it's small enough, I'll place it on actually on my third eye. So if I have like one of those tumbled stones or if it's a flat, like this one's a palm stone. So it's flat. The surface is flat. When I lay, I meditate laying down most, most of the time. So I'll lay down and then I'll place the crystal like over my third eye and um, meditate like that. Other times I will hold the crystal in my hand or I've been known to place it all over my chest or I'll place it over like my womb area if I'm doing a meditation on that. Or I'll just hold it and I'll hold two sometimes in my hands and I have them like on down to my sides. So it's like whatever preference, whatever works for you. Another tip I have is oils. Um, so I brought three of my oils. Um, oils are really good for not over, not only just the aromatherapy, like it's calming. It's very like when you smell something, it puts you in a place. Like, I don't know if you guys know <coughs> sunblock. When I smell sunblock, I am instantly relaxed because I am I am brought back to the energy of like being at the beach and seeing the beautiful um, ocean and smelling the air. And so sunblock to me is a very like soothing and relaxing and vacation scent. Um, but I also love really, really love oils like um, lavender. So I have lavender oil. This one I bought over at Sprouts. So you could totally find find it at one of those like um Whole food stores in their aisle where they have um, their lotions and stuff. So this is chakra balancing. It's insightful third eye, and it is in the scent of lavender. So if you have a Sprouts nearby or any kind of like a Whole Foods market, um, they usually have them there. So it looks like this, and it's a roll-on, which is my favorite because it's not messy. So you have the little roll on part and I like to roll it and please excuse my scratch. Luna attacked me today, <laughs> but I like to roll it on my, um, my wrists because it's your pulse point. So when you feel your pulse, it's supposed to like radiate the scent. Um, so I put it on my wrist and if I'm meditating, sometimes I will drop some on my third eye or I will drop, literally I'll drop some above my lip. So when I'm like, when you're breathing in, you could smell the scent. It's really relaxing. So I'll do that too. Um, if you're working with a certain chakra, like like they have the chakra oils. So you could, like I said, I would dab it on my third eye because this is the third eye chakra. They have the root, they have the sacral, they have the heart. It's, but I only have the third eye. Um, this is another oil that I picked up recently. It's Zen. It's a fragrance oil. So again, you could you know put this on your pulse points. You could put it on your third eye. You could put it on your chest. This one's a really relaxing scent. It's really, it's kind of strong, but I love it. So I'll put some of this on sometimes if I'm meditating or if, even if I'm just journaling and I have music in the background, I'll put some oil on. And then the third one is one that I purchased actually from a, um, a local witch, um, Inked Goddess Creations. And she made this beautiful um, oil and herb concoction so it's really cute and it has it has a little moon um pendant here <laughs> and this one is spell oil no I'm sorry it's spirit oil call on spirits or guides so this is one that she she actually made with the intention of connecting with your spirit guides or con connecting with um you know live um lives spirit who has passed on um or spirit in general you know those energies so if I want to connect when I'm doing, because sometimes I will meditate to connect <coughs> with spirit, um, I will do that. Is this like a shadow? Oh, yeah, it is. I was like freaking me out. I was like, what is that? <laughs> we'll talk about spirit and then there's like the shadow right here. No, it's a shadow from the coat. 
Um, so I will use spirit oil, um, this one for that connecting with spirit guides or whatever. So like I said, I'll just dab a little bit on my pulse point, put it on my third eye. Usually like that's, those are my favorite spots. So oils are another good thing. Oils will take you to the state, the mindset, the energy that you want to work with. You're smelling it. It's aromatherapy. It's really good for that. I have like oil on my forehead now. <laughs> um, <coughs> Another thing that I'll do is I'll pull a card, okay? So I have certain oracle decks that I really love to pull cards from because it puts me in the zone. And the Work Your Light Oracle is actually one of those. Sometimes I'll use just a basic tarot deck and I'll pull a tarot card. But the Work Your Light Oracle, I'll shuffle and I'll ask the intention, um, you know, Spirit, please reveal to me the message or the um, energy or the, the picture the feeling that you want me to connect with in my meditation. And I'll, I'll literally just sit there and shuffle and I'll keep shuffling until a card pops out or like a card pops out. <laughs> in this case, there's two of them. And the messages on the cards, the images of the cards is what I will have in my mind as I sit there and meditate on the message. So let's say I was getting ready to, to, to do my meditation. I put the oils on, I turned off the lights, I have my meditation ready to go. I have the crystal ready that I'm gonna work with. And then I pulled align your life. I keep getting this card, it's so funny. Align your life, what is no longer in alignment with who you truly are. So that could be something that I would sit and think about while I meditate. The other one is the age of light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. So I love it. I love that this card came out because it's kind of like I'm talking to you guys. I'm sharing with you my meditation tips. Um, and it's like I've been training for it for a lifetime. I feel like I've been, I've been meditating for about six years. And that's nowhere near as long as like I'm sure other of you guys. <laughs> but I just discovered it. Like I said, when I started my healing journey, when my spiritual awakening really happened, I started to meditate. It was a healing process for me, but it also turned into just a form of me to connect with my higher self. And that is really what meditation is. It is you connecting with your higher self. It is you being able to quiet your mind and quiet everything around you and to just be able to focus on either the message of the card, okay, or put yourself into a place where you just really like you just quiet everything and you try to get an answer to, from your spirit guides, from spirit or from your higher self or from God. Um, and you try to get the answer that you were searching for. It's insightful. It's helpful. It's healing. It's also sometimes just to freaking calm you down when you're going through a stressful time. It's to calm you. It's to take away stress and take away the anxiety. That's a lot of the times when I meditate, I'm doing it for that purpose because I'm stressed out, stressed out or I have a lot of anxiety at the time, so sometimes I'll just purely meditate for that. Um, other times I will meditate because I want to connect with spirit. Or other times I'll meditate because I'm looking for an answer. Um, or what else do I meditate for? Past life stuff. I haven't really done it so much, but lately I've been really called to, so that'll probably be something I'll also work with. Um, I meditate before my channel readings. So I offer channel readings and I'm actually going to start putting that out there again. So if you guys want a channeled reading from me, I'll be putting that up soon. So be on the lookout, but I'll meditate before that too. And I actually meditate on you. So I'll write down like what I receive and then that's part of your reading. Um, what else? I'll meditate for, for peace, for intentions. That's another big one. I do a lot of full and new moon intention, so sometimes I'll meditate that night for that. Um, but it's just, there's a lot of reasons for meditation, you guys. It's not just to quiet your heart. It's Sometimes it's to receive message. Sometimes it's just to focus, okay? Other times it's just to, to receive an answer. It's it, it, You can use meditation for so many different things. Um, and meditation doesn't have to be a full blown, like 30 minute session where you're like sitting down in quietness. It could be a five minute go to boom. You'll be done in five minutes. So don't worry about how long am I meditating? What if you have a thought that comes through and you're meditating? Let it go. <laughs> I always tell people like if a random thought comes to mind and it's like, what am I going to eat later? Let it go and continue on. 
you know, sometimes you'll get random thoughts because it's actually spirit connecting with you, but sometimes you'll just get those thoughts. It's like, it's you, um, but you let it go. You don't let it hinder you. You don't let it like spoil your session. You just let it pass. And as you continue meditating, you'll learn how to do that even more. Um, it'll get easier and all of that. But those are just my tips for you guys on how I meditate and how I first started meditating with the gorgeous high priestess. Um, I hope that this helped you guys. I hope it gave you something to think about. Thank you guys for watching. I apologize for the crazy sick voice. I'm still sick, but I'm starting to get over it. Um, but if you have any questions, leave me the questions in the comments below. I will get to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and I hope to connect with you guys soon. Bye my loves.